When you look at almost every other continent in the world, you see they have dominant terrestrial predators. North America has bears, cougars and wolves. Its southern counterpart has the jaguar. Europe also has bears and wolves. Asia has leopards, bears, tigers and even lions. And of course, Africa has hyenas, cheetahs, leopards and lions. Now look, technically Antarctica doesn't have anything else, but we won't talk about that in this video. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host here with another video. The question of today being, why aren't there any large terrestrial predators in Australia? Now, when we peep to the land down under, it's evident to see that the continent slash country lacks a large terrestrial predator. The key word being terrestrial, as I'm not counting the saltwater crocodile. The largest predator that Australia holds is the dingo, which reaches a whopping 49 inches in length and 23 inches in height at the shoulder with a weight of around 35 pounds. Maybe using whopping wasn't a nice description. Underwhelming more like. When you think about it, it being the largest terrestrial predator is quite tiny. So then, why aren't there any large terrestrial predators? Well, the two main points which I'll explain to why Australia lacks a figurehead for such is being extinction and evolution. As you probably know, like every other place during the Pleistocene Epoch, Australia was filled with megafauna, from Procoptodon, the giant kangaroo, to Diprotodon, the giant wombat. However, there were large predators which also called Australia home. First on the list, we have the giant monitor lizard, known as Megalania. These lizards could have grown 23 feet in length. However, according to Australian Museum, it's more likely that they reached 16 feet. Its weight is estimated to be an average of 710 pounds, with upper estimates putting it to around 1,268 pounds. Really, its size depends on what modern animal they use as a basis, but using something like a Komodo dragon could even put it up to 4,280 pounds, though that seems a bit extreme. So what we had here in Australia was a saltwater crocodile sized lizard that would run around and pretty much eat anything it wanted. Imagine if they were still roaming around today. But the giant lizard wasn't the only thing stalking Australia's landscape as there was also the pouch lion known as Thycaleo. Despite being nicknamed the marsupial lion, it actually wasn't related to them, rather being part of the Diprotodonia order. These guys measured around 30 inches at the shoulder and 60 inches in length with a weight between 223 to 300 pounds. This would make it larger than any other known leopard, so as far as size goes, it's fairly large. It was also suggested to have the strongest bite of any mammal when it came to pound to pound force, which I mean, hey, that's pretty good if you ask me. So then I imagine you have to question, how could such powerful predators end up becoming extinct? Well, it's believed to be due to driving factors, one of which being climate change and the other human activities. The only issue about putting it on climate change is that in Australia, there doesn't seem to be any major climate changes during this time, with the environment remaining relatively stable. However, considering that humans arrived to Australia around 65,000 years ago, and the megafauna went extinct around 40,000 years ago, it lends more credence to the fact that the megafauna, such as Megalania and Thycaleo, were either hunted to extinction or their prey was, which ultimately led to them starving to extinction. But I mean, then again, other people argue that there was like a drying out and droughts which could have killed it. So not too sure. Still up for debate and still up for research. Thus, it took out two of the large terrestrial predators that roamed Australia's land. Or what would have been the figurehead for lions, tigers, bears for Australia. Now, just before I go into the next reason to why there aren't any large terrestrial predators calling Australia home, I wanted to say thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed so far, then I'd appreciate if you like and subscribe. I mean, it'd help out the channel growth. Anyways, back to it. This directly snowballs into our next point. As you might ask, well, if those two predators became extinct, how come no other animal evolved larger? Well, nature is about efficiency and survival, not to get larger without reason. Once the predators are capable of surviving, it wouldn't give them any reason to grow larger. Because their populations would have already been stable at the time, growing would just take up more resources and would most likely lead to disadvantages. And hence, as all the other megafauna became extinct with only smaller relatives existing, it meant that there was no advantage for predators such as the Tasmanian Devil or Thylacines to grow larger, as their niches were already successfully filled and their populations were thriving. Well, I mean, thriving until human interference and invasive species were brought along, but you know, I digress. Even over thousands of years that the dingoes have called Australia home, they fit their niche with that issue, which meant they weren't required to grow larger for their environment. So by default, animals will try to remain as small as possible while reaching their objective, sustained populations. Predators don't need to grow bigger if they already have enough food 
available for their weight class. And ultimately, because of this, there are no large dominant terrestrial predators in Australia, the largest of which being dingoes, which are just the size of a dog. There's no impressive lions, none of that really. But to be fair, Australia has enough animals that could kill you as is. So I think a giant marsupial lion or a crocodile sized lizard is the last thing they'd want roaming around their backyard. So we've reached the end of the video. And I must say it is a bit of a shame that Australia lacks the largest terrestrial carnivores that most other continents house. I mean, at least it can play with Antarctica. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any ideas for another video, don't forget to comment and I'll see you all next time. See ya.